Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Davis, the original Drone Camps channel on YouTube. And today we're gonna put this racer quad on the bench. We're gonna help out the new guys that are just building quads for the first time how to set everything up in beta flight, the very basics of beta flight to get you up in the air and flying. We're gonna to try to make this as simple as possible. It really is an easy step-by-step -step process to get your first race quad up in the air. So we're gonna give back to the community by doing this super simple video. Please do share it with a friend who's first starting to build because this is gonna be a great video. So anyway, let's go ahead and put this one on the bench and get started. So here we go, we're on the bench, and this is the Furry B Futon here. It is an ARF. Uh, all I had to do was add an FR Sky receiver to it. And we're going to go ahead and make this as simple as possible for this video because there's a lot of videos out there on YouTube that seem to be a little bit complicated. They have a lot of other information on there that you guys just don't understand as beginners. So we're gonna try to uh, make this as simple as possible, as painless as possible to get up in the air safely and fly your FPV racer. Um, this video is gonna be great for the new guys. So please pass this one on to someone who is brand new to flying FPV. Now there's a couple things you'll need. You'll need your quad already built or your ARF edition racer that's ready to be programmed in beta flight. You're gonna need to download beta flight configuration from the Chrome Web Store and get it on your PC or Mac for this video so you can follow along. I'm going to assume that you've already bound your receiver to your Tyrannus Plus as well. That process is very simple. All you have to do is go into your Tyrannus, select bind, your Tyrannus is going to start beeping and when it starts beeping, go ahead and hold down your receiver button with your finger and plug in the battery at the same time. Once it's connected after say 10 to 15 seconds, go ahead and unplug your battery, get out of the, the bind menu in your Tyrannus and go ahead and plug your battery back in. If it's bound, it will have a green light on the receiver so you'll be good to go there. Now I chose the Furry B Futon for this video because it has a nice little boot button on the side right here and I can just hold that down to flash the firmware on this and we're going to go ahead and erase all the settings on here for you guys uh, and, and put the latest version of SP Racing on here. Now if you have a different flight board than this one what you'll need to do is go ahead and go connect this with your USB cable to Betaflight. Find out what board it is in the CLI. All you have to do in the very bottom, the very bottom tab it says CLI. Type in this command version. Hit return. Now, when you see what version your flight controller is, that way you know which to flash to your board. Very simply, type in version. Now, I'll go ahead and plug in the cable and we'll get started with this Betaflight instructional. Now, here we are inside Betaflight and we're gonna go ahead and flash the firmware on the quad. So, the first thing you wanna do is go to firmware flasher here and you're gonna select in this menu right here, you're gonna select which controller you have. There's a ton of them in here, don't get confused. Like I said, if you need to find out what version it is, I'll show you how to do that really quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the quad here and you should see a light on your board somewhere. Now wait till you see this load up and go ahead and connect here. Now I'm inside and I can go down to the very bottom CLI right here and I can simply type in version, like I said before, and I know that it's an FP Racing, SP Racing F3. So that's the one that I'm going to choose to flash it. And I'll go ahead and disconnect, and I'll go to the firmware flasher. I'm going to no reboot sequence, flash on connect. We'll leave the manual baud rate at 115 right there, and we have everything except the firmware version. I'll go ahead and select the latest firmware version, and the next thing you're going to do is load firmware online. You do have to have your Wi-Fi enabled to get this to load. Once it loads, it'll do this. And just scroll all the way to the bottom here until you see this progress bar here. And go ahead and unplug the quad. And we want to select auto connect there. And we want to also, up top, we're going to make sure that flash on connect is selected. If it doesn't flash on connect, when you plug in the USB port, just go ahead and press flash firmware. Now look, it failed. Why did it fail? Because I wasn't holding down the boot button. So on the side of your quad, locate the boot button. If you have a flight controller that has two tabs that have to be bridged with solder, you might have to do that before activating DFU. 
Okay, so now I'm holding down the boot button and it should automatically start to flash the quad. I'm still holding the boot button and the flashing process has started, so it's updating the firmware on the flight controller. It looks like April 10th. So we're still waiting for it to flash. Just keep holding down that boot button with your finger during this process. And now while it finishes up, we can still hold it while it's verifying. You can possibly let go of the boot button at this point while it's verifying, uh, but I usually hold it all the way to the end till it's completely done. And you don't have to have your battery plugged in for this process. So now it's going to erase all the settings for the modes and everything. We'll go ahead and show you how to set those up as well as identifying which port your receiver's on. Now it was successful, so now I can just let go of the boot button and unplug the USB cable. And we'll set it back down. Now we'll go back to the welcome screen. Now we have a new version of the firmware on the Furry B Futon. So now that you have your drivers installed, go ahead and take your USB cable and connect it. And wait till you see something load up on this tab right here. When you do, go ahead and connect. And this is the first screen. This is the setup screen for calibrating your accelerometer on the bench if you need to do that. Uh, sometimes you don't need to do it from the factory default, but this is where you can also check your orientation. So you can pick up your quad and move it back, left, right, and forward to make sure that all the flight controller orientations are right. If you have your flight controller switched around on a 180 or 90 degrees, you'll need to go into the configuration and change that. Uh, and I will show you that in just a minute, but let's go ahead and go over to ports. Now I'm using S bus receiver on here, so I need to activate serial RX on this one. Uh, and, and whatever you guys do, do not take off UART1. Uh, if you turn this off and save it, you won't be able to connect back to your, your quadcopter because UART1 is utilizing the USB port. So we'll go ahead and select Serial RX there and we'll save and reboot. So go ahead and do that on yours. I'm assuming that you're using an SBUS receiver. If you're using PPM, you don't need to do that. So I'll go ahead and disconnect. I'll wait a moment and connect again. Now I'll go back to ports to see if that took and it did. So it should be all good there. Now we go down to configuration for the next menu. Now your quad is set up on the quad X setup and you'll have motor one here, motor two, motor three, and motor four. You want to put your props on in this orientation. So right rear is always gonna be clockwise, right turn. Directly diagonal from that is also a right turning prop. And number two will be a left turn and number three will be a left turn prop. Very important that you follow that. And we'll do a little bit of that setup a little bit later when we do motor testing. Now over here I have one shot available on this ESC setup on the futon. So I'm gonna leave that one set up to one shot 125, that's good. And we will check the minimum throttle for the lowest ESC value and the max throttle here in BL Heli Suite in just a minute uh, once we're done with this beta flight configuration. And the board sensor alignment was what I was talking about earlier when you're checking your orientation. So if your board is flipped on a 90 degree angle, if you built your quad and you have a 90 degree, or you have it flipped around a 180, you change it on the yaw axis. So if I had it to the side, I would try 90, and then I would go back to the ports, or back, excuse me, back to the setup, and I would check the orientation on the virtual display window. So now that I've made some changes here, I'm gonna save and reboot real quick up top and disconnect and connect again. Go back to configuration, we'll go down. We wanna have VBAT on, everything looks good there. You don't have to mess around with this too much. If you plug in a battery real quick, you should see that your voltage on your quad shows up at the very top of Betaflight and it's saying 16.7 volts there right now and everything looks good for that. So we can leave all of that the same. 
We're gonna leave the gyro update frequency the same there, two, two kilohertz, and pid loop frequency at one kilohertz there. We're gonna leave on the accelerometer because I'm going to set up stabilize for you guys in your modes. That's very important for new guys learning to fly. Current sensor, we're gonna leave that set the way it is. Now over here in the other features menu, there's a lot of different stuff we can turn on, but just leave on telemetry. I'm gonna turn off black box for this quad. I'm not gonna use that in transponder. I'm gonna turn that off. Now, once you make a sane change, go ahead and save it and reboot. You should hear your ESCs auto restart and initialize again. I'm gonna disconnect again and I'm gonna restart again. So most of our configuration is pretty much done for the exception of the min throttle and max throttle values. And we'll change those a little bit later. Now let's go to fail safe real quick. Fail safe is super important to set up on any brand new quad because if you lose signal to your transmitter, your quad could have a flyaway. Now this is important to set it to drop. I always set it to drop. Uh, mainly because I, I, don't, I don't want it to uh, fly anywhere if I lose communication. I want it to immediately drop to the ground. So a uh, very, very safe way to do things. And if you set this up to drop, test this on the bench with the props off. Whenever I'm working in beta flight, I always do take the props off. So very important to do that, guys. Um, we're going to also set up in the FR Sky radio. I wanna show you this real quick. I'm just gonna to go to inside the menu of the futon. I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom where you would normally bind right here. And I'll show you a little closer up. See where it says no pulses? You have a secondary fail safe with the Tyrannus Plus. So select no pulses here and make sure it says no pulses. Uh, that way, if there is no reading coming to the receiver, to the radio, it also knows to stop what it's doing and disarm the quad. Um, very important. So you have a two-step fail safe there and that's kind of nice. So beta flight support for fail safe and on the Tyrannus Plus, you can't go wrong there. Now we'll go down to PID tuning. We're gonna leave all these rates the same. The super rates are at 0 0.70 all the way down there. I'm not gonna mess with any of these default PID settings for this flight controller. Leave those the same, because Betaflight these days is actually pretty good on a lot of default settings. You can usually fly your quad. Uh, you can get into messing with these a little bit later out in the field. So right on the bench, when you go outside and do a flight test, a line of sight flight test for the first time, uh, your maiden, you want to do that line of sight, by the way, not with your goggles on because it could fly up and hit you. Very, very important for the new guys. And, and even experienced flyers should always line of sight test before you actually go out and do any FPV. Now, I'm going to pick up my radio and see if I see any of the channel maps moving there. And look, we don't see anything moving because I actually forgot to do one step in the configuration, which is select SBUS. You have to do that in the configuration. So go back to this configuration page. I'm going to go down to where it says receiver. And setting up your receiver is a two-step process. You're going to have to do it in the ports tab here by selecting serial RX for your SBUS receiver and go back to configuration and make sure you select serial SBUS based receiver right here. Serial based receiver is gonna be for SBUS and go ahead and select SBUS on the next tab down and save and reboot. And now when I reboot in the receiver tab, it should show me that we have stick movement. So I'm gonna disconnect, reconnect again, go down to receiver and now I can check to see that my channel maps are working. So we're gonna go ahead, check out the roll axis here. Left should show you left, just like you see on the screen, roll to the left, and it should go all the way from 1000 to 2000. And you can set those endpoints in your radio to work correctly on screen here. My Tyrannus is a little bit old, so it's not perfect, but you should rest around 1500, exactly at 1500. I'm sure there's some dust on these old gimbals. Um, so let's check the pitch should go forward like this all the way up to 2000 and all the way down to 1000 come back to 1500 y'all same thing left and right here 
and right now it's set up to arm the quad by stick. So we're not going to do it like that for your setup. We're actually going to put your arm on a switch. That's very important because if you're flying and you somehow come down here, you can actually disarm your quad on accident while you're flying. So uh, I usually don't do stick arming, but by default in Betaflight, it's set up to do that. So the next one is going to be throttle all the way up, all the way down. So, okay, that looks good. And my mode switch is gonna be SB here. So you see that that's on aux two, and we'll set that up in the modes tab in a moment. Now I have a three position switch for my modes right there. So our arm switch is gonna be aux three. You can see that moving there. And our beeper switch is going to be set to this S2 switch right here, which is aux one. And I'll show you how to set up your beeper as well. So we're good there, we can go ahead and save now go ahead and save that. Now we'll go set up the modes. First thing we'll do is set up the arm switch and we're gonna set that to, I believe it was aux three. Yes, it is aux three. So when you first start up your train, it switches all the way away from you. It should be all up, all facing away from you. We're gonna take the arm switch and we know we want it to arm at that value there. So we're gonna take this slider bar and move it over just like that, drag that tab over just a little bit, tighten it up. Now go ahead and save. Now we have our switch on, switch off, switch on, and the quad is armed right now at the low value. And I have motor stop off as well, and I want you guys to know about motor stop. I leave motor stop off because I want my motors spinning when it's armed. Some people make the mistake of hitting their throttle. When you don't have motor stop, when you have motor stop engaged, what happens is you have no throttle when you arm. So sometimes people accidentally hit the stick and fly up into their face. They didn't realize that their quad was armed. Um, so very important, leave motor stop off. And I'll show you that. Just jump back real quick to the configuration. Motor stop is right here. You wanna have that off, very important. So we'll go back to modes. We have our arm switch set up. Now we can set up angle mode and a lot of times I set up angle mode on the first switch position number one. Now on your three position switch go ahead and check that make sure that we have it on aux two there. We'll go ahead and save so now I have stabilize which is angle mode on that first switch. Now the next position down on the switch right in the center will be horizon mode. Horizon simply lets you fly with a little bit of stability, but also lets you flip and roll. So when you're ready to do your first flips and rolls, you can fly horizon mode. Now we're gonna go back, check that from angle to horizon, and we'll arm it real quick, just for fun. Okay, disarm. And if you want to fly acro, your third position switch all the way down will be acro. So you don't have to there's no tab on here for acro, so if some of the guys looking for acro can't find it because you don't have to have it there on a three position switch. When you simply go to the third switch, you are in acro mode. No stabilization whatsoever, and you're gonna have to learn how to fly that probably on the simulator first. A lot of new guys will crash automatically if they go into acro. Now we can add air mode on the acro range, and there's a couple ways we can do this. Now I can go all the way down to the third position. I can tighten this all the way up just like this and save it like that. So I have air mode only activated inside acro. But you notice that this little bar didn't move when I moved down to channel three, or excuse me, uh, tab number three there, switch position number three. That's because I didn't change it to aux two. That is this particular switch. And that's the way you're gonna do it on your terrain. So you have to use the receiver tab to figure out which auxiliary switch is your three position switch. Okay, so now I have acro and air mode is only on acro. I can also drag air mode back over top of horizon, back like this. So if I want air mode available on horizon mode, I can have it on both of those ranges. Now I can drag it back to where it was. And I like to keep my tabs kind of tight, just like you see here. Now you can move these sliders right here, just like this, or you can move by grabbing in the center and move the whole tab. So 
All of this is set up now. All of the modes are set up with the exception of the beeper. Now we're going to go ahead and add the beeper. And if I can't remember what switch this one was, I can go back to the receiver and it was aux one. Then I can go back to the modes. And before you leave your modes menu, by the way, make sure that you save what you did. Because if you come back to this menu after you go out of it, everything will be gone if you don't save it. So we'll go ahead and add range on the beeper. And now I know it was this switch right here. So it was aux one. So we'll add that, we'll slide that bar over and we'll tighten it in just a little bit. Now I can test that, see I can make it a little bit tighter. Okay, now we're gonna save. And once I save, once the switch is all the way down and it's inside that gold bar, the beeper is active. So now I can go back. Now I have a beeper on my quad. Very, very nice. So now that we're all done setting up the modes for the first time, we know everything works correctly. We tested everything. Uh, I unplugged the battery and turned off the radio. Now we can go down to the motors tab next. You don't have to mess with adjustments or servos tab. Now motors is where we're gonna test motor direction. And the way I like to do it, sometimes I'll put a little tiny three inch prop with no nut on the very top of this so I can see which way it spins. It's not gonna flip the quad over. If the prop flies off, it's gonna go straight up. Um, and I haven't had a problem or an issue doing it that way. Now, if you wanna do it, the very safe way to do it would be to put a piece of painter's tape on here. So you have sort of a flag that spins around. When the motor comes to a stop, you'll see which direction it's spinning. Now, the way that this works is inside Betaflight right here, if you select this little tab right here, I understand the, the wrists, propellers are removed. We have the propellers off. You can go ahead and drag this master throttle value up and you'll see these numbers increase on all four motor tabs right there, one, two, three, four, from 1,000 up to 2,000. But right now, I don't see anything happening on the quad because it's not plugged in. So you'll need to turn on your radio, go ahead and turn on your Tyrannus and plug in your quad. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure all the switches are in the farthest position away from us. So until I arm this, it shouldn't do anything there, just sitting. Now I can test the motors by going to the master tab and throttle up. And you can also check your minimum motor value by doing this as well. What it will start spinning at, it looks like 1026 or so. 10, about 1026, okay. And you can go all the way up. You can also test them one at a time. So we'll go ahead and get a piece of painter's tape on motor number one. We're gonna do this in order. So what we're gonna do is put a piece on this one and we will just move this value right here. And we wanna make sure that this motor is turning to the right. So I don't have any painter's tape available. So I'm gonna use this piece of packing tape here and I just made a long piece here and I'll stick it over top of the motor here and what I'm gonna do is take a sharpie marker and color on one side so that I can see it a little better my little black flag here so I can see it spin around and I can figure out which direction this motor is traveling uh, very important for your first flight and your first maiden to be successful so I'll test motor one as I bring the value up it should turn to the right a little bit much. You know, it's kind of hard to see there on that black surface, but you can see it is turning to the right. Now, if it's not turning to the right, we're gonna have to switch it in beta flight. And it actually looks like it's going left. I'm gonna double check that just by using my little three inch prop that I have sitting over here. And uh, this one is going to the left and just barely give it a little bit of throttle there. Okay, it's actually going to the right. So since there's no nut on this, it's free to spin and it just gives you a little bit of way to tell which way it's spinning. Now we'll go up to motor number two and we can test there just by adding a little tiny bit of throttle. Don't go full max with it. Be very, very gentle. You see what happens there if it flies off. So be very careful, wear safety glasses. So I see that that one is going to the left. Now I can go to motor three. So far we have everything correct. We don't have to switch anything around. Now that one's also correct. 
and motor number four, the last motor here. That should go to the right, give it a little bit of, makes a nice noise. And we go to the right there, and it's also turning the right direction. So all of our motors are correct, and I don't have to reverse anything in BL Heli. But I will show you how to do that. If you had one of these wrong, go ahead and remember, say, motor two was the wrong direction. Just remember that you need to reverse that one in BL Heli. So very simply go into BL Heli and make that change and save it, uh, write it to your ESCs, and it will remember the motor direction. But I'll show you how to do that next. Now the next thing we're going to do is go down to the very bottom to the CLI, and I'm going to just give you a way to see all the values that you've added. And the way you do that is press, type in D-U-M-P for dump. And dump is going to show you every single value. It's also going to go ahead and restart your quadcopter. So up at the very top, we have the information on the current flight board. We have SP Racing, and that's April 3rd, 2017. And it has all of our different values in there. If we need to go in there and change anything manually, you can do that in the CLI as well. So now that we have everything set up here inside Betaflight, let's go ahead and go over to BL Heli so I can show you a little bit of setup there for setting your motors or reversing your motors. Okay, now we're gonna check BL Heli to make sure that our ESCs are loading up properly. Uh, if you have a four in one, you'll be able to see one, two, three, four ESCs in that stack. Or if you have ESCs that are on the arms like this, individual ESCs, you should see all four load up in BL Heli. Uh, very important because if you see one not loaded in BL Heli, it means you have a failure somewhere and that one of your motors is not gonna work when you go to fly it for the first time. So very important to do this step. Uh, go ahead and turn on your radio, your Tyrannus, and play plug in your battery. You're going to need to have a battery plugged in for this process. Uh, go ahead and also open up configurator and have that ready. They also have drivers for BL Heli configurator as well for the PC. And we're going to go ahead and connect and you'll get this white screen right here. And it's a little bit confusing because, hey, it doesn't show you anything. So click on read setup and now it should load all four ESCs and the common parameters on the left. Now ESC1, I can see right here, is set to 1016 to 12, 2012 max throttle there, min throttle, max throttle. You can go back in beta flight and you can set these values up in beta flight and you should have a smoother operating motor. Now we can flash firmware on that one as well. If we wanted to, we can update it to the latest and greatest BL Heli firmware. If we scroll all the way down, we'll see ESC 2, 3, and 4. Now, we talked about earlier, what if motor 2 is switched around, going the wrong direction? This is how you switch it. See where it says normal there, reversed, bidirectional, and bidirectional reversed? All you simply have to do is select reversed there, and click on right setup. It's going to write it to the ESCs. And now we have motor number 2 will be reversed direction. But since ours was perfect for the setup, I'm gonna put it back to normal and I'm gonna write the setup there. Now, if you feel that your motors are getting hot, um, you might need to do a little bit of PID tuning on your quad or you might need to reset the minimum throttle and max throttle values on your quad. Uh, pretty important that you do that. Uh, if you have some ESCs or motors getting hot, uh, you can also try flashing new firmware on your ESCs and update to the latest version. But that's about it for the setup, you guys. It's pretty simple. And now I'm able to go out and do my first maiden flight with my quadcopter. Uh, it is all set up in beta flight and BL Heli configurator and ready to go. So thanks again, you guys, for watching the Drone Camps channel. This has been an awesome little uh, beta flight simple explanation and tutorial for you guys so pass this on to the next guy if uh, you think they need a little help in beta flight this will definitely get them off the ground so thanks again you guys i'm justin davis from drone camps i'll see you on the next one